What's up everyone, it's Hitting Trainer John Sauropoulos here, and in this video, we'll be talking about Smash Factor. What is it, how is it measured, and how should we use it? Okay, so what actually is Smash Factor? Smash Factor is a metric we use to quantify a hitter's bat-to-ball skills. Evaluating bat-to-ball skills isn't anything new to the game of baseball, but quantifying, tracking, and ranking these skills is. Smash Factor is calculated by measuring two components on all of your swings. First is going to be your quality of contact or collision efficiency, basically telling us when you do hit the ball, how good are you at making flush contact. And next, Smash Factor measures how good you are at actually making contact. If we take this one step further, when you swing, Smash is telling us how often do you put the ball in play with or hit a foul ball. By combining quality of contact and the skill of putting the bat on the ball, Smash Factor is able to account for and quantify the entire spectrum of components that comprise a hitter's bat to ball skills. When measuring quality of contact, what we are actually measuring is your collision efficiency, or how well did you transfer bat speed into exit velocity. In simpler terms, it answers this question. How well did you square that baseball up? Here's an example of a ball back collision with a very high smash factor. And here's another example of flush contact. Smash factor is great because on any given swing, we can calculate your smash factor and determine how well did you actually strike that baseball. Okay, time for a little bit of background info. Baseball bats have two nodes of vibration, one on the handle and then one in the barrel, known as a sweet spot. These nodes are the blue dots in this illustration. And in this picture, it has a little bit more detail. You can see that both nodes are labeled in red. Hit a ball in the sweet spot, like this, and there will be little to no vibrations. This is an example of a ball back collision with very high smash factor. But, on the other hand, miss the sweet spot, by hitting the ball on the handle or off the end, and energy will be lost in the form of bat vibrations. This is an example of a ball back collision with very low smash factor. In this collision, bat speed was not transferred into exit velocity efficiently. And here's one more example of what high versus low smash factor contact looks like. The interesting and exciting thing about smash factor is that we've discovered it to be a very trainable skill but we'll be touching on this more in a later module. Measuring contact quality is only one part of the smash factor equation. When calculating smash factor, we have to make sure we penalize swings that result in a whiff or foul ball. In order to do this, any swings that result in a whiff get assigned a smash factor of zero. And any swing that results in a foul ball also gets assigned a smash factor of zero. The more you whiff or foul balls off, the lower your smash factor is going to be. If you're looking for a more conceptual understanding of this idea, go ahead and check out the swinging strike percentage leader and lagger boards and compare them to the smash factor leader and lagger boards. What you'll start to see is that a lot of hitters with high swinging strike percentages tend to have lower smash factors and vice versa. This is generally speaking, of course. So how do we actually calculate smash factor? Here's going to be the formula we use. We take the smash factor on each individual swing, add them together, and then divide by the total number of swings taken. Boom, we have your average smash factor. Being able to measure contact quality and the skill of making contact gives us the best evaluation of how good or bad a hitter's bat to ball skills actually are. Smash factor is super useful because we can calculate average smash factor for a season but we can also calculate your average smash factor during any given training session. We were able to do this using our internal contact tracking tool. Essentially, knowing your smash factor during a training session tells us how well you are actually squaring the ball up during that session. This is extremely valuable for analysis and training prescriptions. And lastly, let's take a look at the MLB smash factor leaderboard and lagger board for the 2021 season. On the left, at the top of the leaderboard, we see some familiar names. 
and hitters that are intuitively described as good bat-to-ball guys, like Nick Madrigal, David Fletcher, and Michael Brantley. And at the bottom of the lagger board, we see players who are generally described as having a lot of swing and miss or whiff in their profiles. While the leaders and laggers don't tell the whole story, seeing which players have good smash factor and which players don't definitely helps us understand this concept a little bit better. So there you have it, smash factor. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.